Yes, may I do like those etchings, Pierre? Well, I think the uh, red room was the best place possibly to put them. <laughs> yes, I must confess, they are rather suited. I... Oh. Burroughs, would you turn on the lights, please? Very good, my lady. Uh, no, 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 no. I have flash. Can I help in any way, sir? No, thank you. We'll manage. Oh, it's no trouble. Burroughs, it is no trouble for us. Very good, sir. Why is he always stalking around? It's his uh, national protective instinct. Oh, yes, your, um, your English butlers always assume that we Frenchmen will immediately attempt to seduce the lady of the house, hmm? Instead of which we have all day. <laughs> exactly. Will you and Mr. Legrand be having it in the library, my lady? What? The tea, my lady. Oh, no, no. Um, leave it in the drawing room. We'll be having it... Taking it later. Very good, my lady. What a pity the photographs you took about a month ago didn't come out well enough for the collector's magazine. Ah, <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, when one is offering for sale a picture by René, particularly one doing, doing his um, uh, reflective period, one desires that the photograph do justice to a work of such quality. If it's worth a hundred and thirty thousand pounds, you say it is. I don't mind how many photographs you take. Oh, Margaret. If only you could learn to appreciate great art. Mm. Regard the tonal structures, oh, the overpowering warmth, the magnificent ambiance. Be careful, you set off the alarm. A little late, I'm afraid. You better call the police. This is a forgery. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Who Done It? Or should I say, Who Nicked It? Now, it would appear that the real painting by the French artist René has been swapped by a person or persons unknown. And to help us find out who did the dirty deed are this week's guests. So, first, let me welcome one of Britain's leading authors, Mr. Kingsley Amis. <laughs> and now a lady who is as beautiful as any of the heroines in her best-selling novels, Miss Jackie Collins. Now next we have one of the great characters of television. An art expert who at a glance can tell a cauliflower ear from a broken nose, <laughs> Mr. Arthur Mallard. <laughs> and last, but far from lost, an expert on open houses, Pete Murray. <laughs> Right, well, that's our panel. We've also selected four people from the studio audience to try and solve who done it. So, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. <laughs> now, don't forget that when you see the suspect stories in flashback, one or more of them could be lying. So, don't believe everything that you see or hear. Right, let's go back to the art of theft, which PC Hope is investigating. But remember, just because he's a village constable doesn't mean that he hasn't got a shrewd eye for detail. There's no doubt about it, Lady Spencer. Your butler makes a very nice cup of tea indeed. Oh, yes. Well, uh, enjoy it while you can. I'm afraid he's leaving. Retiring? Not exactly. It's just that... I can't afford him. What with the death duties on the estate and the cost of everything going up. Oh, I see. That's why you wanted to sell the... Rene. Yes. It's a shame, really. It's been in the family for over a hundred years, but um, I must admit the £130,000 would come in very useful right now. But surely the insurance company will pay for it. 
that's the trouble. Why? Unless we can find evidence of breaking and entering, the insurance company won't pay a penny. Ah, well, you're in luck there. I made a check earlier of all of the windows, and I found that recently someone had forced one of them sashes. Good heavens. Does Burroughs know? Burroughs, eh? I think I'd better have a word with them. Well, uh, do help yourself to some more tea. Maggie? P.S. says someone's nicked the Renner. Yes, I know. Isn't it terrible? Well, it's a damn good likeness, even P.S. having second thoughts. He's on the phone now to Royce Turner, the expert on art forgeries. Do you mean to say this mightn't be a forgery? If Turner confirms it's not a fake, then there hasn't been a crime. And you'll be wasting your time, Constable Hope. Oh, I, uh, I see you've already met my uh, <laughs> stepson. Oh, aye, right, Lady Spencer. Excessive noise on the motorbike. But even if this picture is genuine, sir, I shan't be wasting my time. I'd like to speak to Mr. Burroughs the butler now, if the, I may. Oh, you think the butler did it, do you? I have an open mind, sir. I'll second that. I don't get your drift, sir. I didn't think you would. He's out here. Burroughs, the fuzz wants you. Oh, Paul, darling, do try to behave yourself. The constable would like a word with you. Very good, my lady. Do you check the windows every night to make sure they're locked? Yes, Constable, I do. Well, did you notice one of them had been forged? No. Well, you come and have a look, and you can tell me if you can see the scratches around the lock. Yes, I believe you're right. I am. But you tell me this. How did you know which one did I come to? Well, it happened last night. That's better. Well, you better tell me about it. I was in my room, reading in bed. Mm -hmm. My room overlooks the front of the house. And to my surprise, I saw someone on a ladder tampering with the burglar alarm. I then observed the intruder proceed to force this window of the drawing room. Well, it took me a few minutes to get downstairs. I'm not as young as I was. I thought it was you. God, Burroughs, you gave me a shock. What are you doing creeping about at this time of night? Watching you remove the alarm bell case, sir. Don't be melodramatic. I forgot my key and didn't want to set the alarm off. Oh, I see. And is this yours, sir? Yes, portable film screen. Just bought it. Play your cards right and I'll let you watch my home movies. Do you know, I've never seen one of these before, sir. Look, don't touch it. They're very delicate and very expensive. So sorry, sir. Will there be anything else? No. But don't tell my mother about me breaking in. She'd only worry. She would indeed, sir. But why didn't you volunteer this information about the break-in in the first place? Well, I knew it was Mr. Paul. He does live here, and he'd forgotten his key. It's quite understandable he didn't wish to wake Lady Spencer. And did you inform her ladyship about it this morning? It seemed little point. Little point? You come here. Do you realize, without evidence of this here break-in, that there be could be no claim made on the insurance company? Oh, yes, of course, Constable. And had you not disclosed it was Mr. Paul who forced the latch, a claim could have been made. I am aware of that, Constable Hope. But it would have been a false claim, and my honesty wouldn't allow that. Your honesty? Excuse me, uh, Constable. Hmm. I have arranged for the great expert on art forgeries, Royce Turner, to examine the René. <sighs> I am certain that it is a fake. But you know, with so much at stake, I would be grateful for a second opinion. Oh, that's a good <laughs> idea, sir. When will he be here? Oh, he is not coming here. We have to go to him. You see, he's confined to his chair. He is an invalid. We go to his house now, huh? He oh. lives a few miles from here. I'll come with you, sir. Oh, I'm glad. I was hoping you would say that. But here, 
If this here picture is a fake, who would have done the painting of it? There are many unscrupulous copyists about. Well, how would you find them? Well, you don't have to find them. If you have a valuable painting, they will find you. We'll get this thing settled once and for all. Shall I bring the car around, milady? Oh, uh, yes, thank you, Boris. That oh, would be no, 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 Margaret. It is not necessary. My car is right outside. After you, sir. Burrows. Uh. It and our panel of experts we're trying to find out who nobbled the naked lady but before we rejoin the action let me sketch in a picture of the action so far Pierre Legrand qualified art expert has told Lady Spencer that a René picture is a fake it was genuine when he was here four weeks before Constable Hope has found out that the insurance policy stipulates the breaking and entering must have taken place for any claim to be valid the family butler, Burroughs, is about to be made redundant, and he reveals that on the previous night, he'd seen Paul Spencer, the stepson, break and enter the house because he had forgotten his key. To check his suspicions that the painting is a fake, Pierre Legrand is taking it to the home of a famous art expert, Royce Turner, which is where we rejoin the action. Reflective mood. Yes. Hmm? Rene. Yes. He painted this when he was in France, just before the First World War. 1912. Uh huh. Beautiful. You mean it's the real thing after all? No, Lady Spencer. This Rene is a beautiful fake. <laughs> no, excuse me a moment. I'll just go to my workshop where I have my special equipment. Look at the paintings. Many of these are forgeries. Very good forgeries. Allow me, sir. No, 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 I can manage. I shan't be a moment. It only takes a few seconds. For once, Pierre, I hope you're wrong. I hope so, too. But we will soon know for sure. Oh, try not to worry, Lady Spencer. I mean, if it is a forgery, I'm sure the insurance company will pay something, even if it's not a full amount. Oh, you don't understand. It's, it's only insured for £30,000, not 130000 I couldn't afford the premium. I wouldn't keep saying how hard up you are, darling. Otherwise, Inspector Barlow here... Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> ...will think you've sold it secretly and are collecting on the insurance as well. What a nasty little mind you have, Paul. And how ungrateful considering how much money your stepmother has lent you. Especially when you have an expensive hobby. Oh, movies. I'm 
sorry, Lady Spencer. Our friend Pierre here was right. Rene is a fake. Oh. Then we do have a crime on our hands. And it's very difficult to tell, ain't it? But if this is a fake, where is the genuine ring? Well, by now it's probably been offered to a private collector for a sum or far below its real value. Oh, it could be a thousand miles away by now. I don't think so, sir. I think we will find it's much closer to us than that. Now, the question is, how near is the painting? And what happened to it? <clears throat> now, as you've seen, we are all assembled here in Lady Spencer's lovely house. So, could we please now have a round of applause for the suspects? <laughs> now, at this... Your tea, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, no sugar, thank you. I take it, sir, that your remark about suspects does not apply to me. Yes, I'm very much afraid to say that it does. So would you sit down with the others? <laughs> right now, panel. Before you start asking questions, you can have any 20 seconds of the action replayed. And we'll start with the ladies first. Jackie Collins, what would you like replayed? I think I'd like the scene where um, he gets into the car, um, where he hands it to the butler. Um, Actually, just before that, where he puts it into his briefcase, where he puts the painting into his briefcase, that's the one I'd like. You'd like to see where he puts the painting yes. into the painting case? Yes, where, where Pierre Legrand puts it into the painting case. Yes, of course. Case. So you shall. <coughs> Kingsley Amis? Well, I'd like to see the, the, the bit where that rather shady butler um, confronts uh, the rather shady stepson by the picture, the question of the alarms. I'd like to see that little bit. In the middle of the night when he yes. surprised him? Yeah. Yes, of course. Arthur Mallard? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand your well, I'd like to see the bit where the butler got out of bed. <laughs> You'd like to see the bit where the butler <laughs> got out of bed. <laughs> I don't think there was a bit where the butler got out of bed. Well, there should have been, because how did he get downstairs? He didn't get out of bed. <laughs> Would you like to see the bit where he was out of bed? Yes, I'd like to see that. Well, yeah. that's already been chosen. Would you like to choose something else? <laughs> Yes, I don't want any bit appertaining to that subject. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I hope they've got that up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pete Murray. I, I'd like to see uh, the bit where the art export um, expert, uh, Royce Turner, is it possible to see where he takes the paint, painting in and brings the painting back again? Is that possible? Or can I, have I got to choose one of those? Two? Just the one piece. Uh, I think where he brings it back, I'd like to see that. <laughs> where he brings the painting, the painting back. back, yes, after he's taken it into the other. You, you mean when he brings it back into the room That's right, yes. and takes it out of the case? No, when he bring, when uh, brings it back, where does he bring it back? Um, when he brings it back, uh, he really takes it out to examine it. Yes, indeed. But when he brings it back from there. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> right. Right, let's start off with some questions, shall we? Kingsley Ames. I have a question. Go Monsieur on. Pierre Le Grand. Um, Peter the Great, an unusual name, perhaps more often found in the Channel Islands than in metropolitan France. Uh, I'd just like to ask one question of a qualified art expert. Was the painter Guardi of the Tuscan or the Umbrian school? Well, it was a mixture of both, you see. He was studying under both, uh, both schools at the time, and he absorbed both of these schools together in order to bring these qualities into this particular special painting. I draw my own conclusions from that. Thank you very much. Très bien, Monsieur Le Grand. Très, très bien. Bon plaisir. Uh, Miss Collins, yes. judging by that bullet hanging around your neck, I would imagine that your question is going to be somewhat loaded. Mm -hmm. huh. No, this is from my last book, Lovehead, but I'm not allowed to say that, am I? No, you're not. <laughs> Thank you. Um, your question, Well, please. actually, my question is to Lady Margaret. You seem very, very friendly with your stepson. Um, can I ask if there's um, more than a sort of motherly relationship between the two of you? Uh, Miss Collins, I feel that 
only an author of your particular bent <laughs> <laughs> could understand our very special relationship. Uh, Paul is an orphan, and oh. I we're very close, very close indeed. Yes. I try to supply <laughs> what's lacking in his background. You know, he hasn't a mother. Ah. And we're very affectionate and very close. I can't really say much more than that. Well, I'm sure you supply everything that's lacking. <laughs> <laughs> it's very kind of you to say so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was very touching, wasn't it? Yes, it was sweet. <laughs> yes. Arthur Mallard, a question, please. Yes. <laughs> well, I would like to ask <laughs> Police Constable Burrows. Uh, uh, I beg your pardon, sir. My name is Hope. Hope, sir. And you will need it, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I want to ask you one question, and one only. Who done it? <laughs> well, sir, I, I'm very glad you asked me that question. And it shows you have an agile mind. Well, for, and I insult. must say, <laughs> if you don't mind my saying so, I find that surprising, sir. Yeah, well, you surprise me and all. <laughs> I think that's an insult to my integrity. No, no, sir, I, I was welcoming you as a fellow intellectual. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, the much. answer is, sir, I, I can only divulge that to my, my uh, superior officer, sir, and my wife. She insists on knowing everything, sir. Thank you very much. Very kind, very kind of you. And I state that categorically. Uh, Pete Murray, a question, please. Yes. <laughs> the fellow Arsenal support, I've got to talk like that, and a Diana Harper. <laughs> I'd like to direct my question to uh, Mr. Barrows, if I may. Uh, no, no, is Barrows the butler? Yes? Yes, indeed. Uh, yes. yes, he is the butler. Yes, he is. Uh, Mr. Barrows, could I ask you how long you've been in the, pl the uh, employ of Lady Margaret? Well, I've been with the household, sir, for 39 years. 39 Her years. ladyship has only been with us for four years. I can't ask a subsidiary question for that, can I? To <laughs> ask you why you're leaving at this particular moment? You are leaving the household, I believe, aren't you? I have heard that that might be happening, sir. Yes, well, the cage of reply, if I may say so. What about you, Arthur? Yeah, I think you're right there, mate. Uh, uh, any other questions? Uh, Kingsley Amis, another question from you? You want you really want Yes, one? please, yes. Hmm. I'd like, I'd like to ask uh, the uh, expert over there, the other expert, the same question about Guardi. Yes. Have you an answer, sir? Uh, yes, I, I agree with I agree with Pierre completely. Mm. Uh, of course, he was, in, uh, he was in France for about 20 years, you know. Yeah. Um, before, what, the death was 17 and 18 during the war. There's no, no knowledge of his death at all, really. Despite the fact that he was in the Venetian school. Mm. Very, very well. Yes. yes. Let's for now. Thank you very much indeed. It was extremely enlightening. Now we're ready for the first replay, which is Arthur Mullard's. Yeah. He would like to see where Burroughs was telling PC Hope how he discovered Paul breaking in. How did you know which one did I come to? Well, it happened last night. That's better. Well, you better tell me about it. I was in my room, reading in bed. Mm -hmm. My room overlooks the front of the house. And to my surprise, I saw someone on a ladder tampering with the burglar alarm. I then observed the intruder proceed to force this window of the drawing room. Well, it took me a few minutes to get downstairs. I'm not as young as I was. All right, Arthur? Yeah. You any the wiser? None. Good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Would you like to ask a question? Would I like to ask a question? Well, naturally. Certainly I would. Certainly I would. I'd like to ask Lady Margaret Spencer. Are you in love with Royce Turner? That's rather bewildering. Why should you think with that? With me? With Royce Turner. Royce Turner. Are you in love with Royce Turner? Well, he's a very attractive man. I mean, I adore his beard and... Oh, uh, this is a relevant uh, short uh, <laughs> You've heard of um, ladies' men. I'm a man's lady, and naturally I adore him, but uh, I wouldn't like to go beyond that. Thank you very Not much. Not here, anyway. You've elucidated something there. 
John Ma Mallard, have I seen you on television? No, not me, it's my brother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Mr Mallard. And that would yeah. it for Mr Kingsley Amos's replay. He would like to see where Burroughs confronts Paul in the hall. I thought it was you. God, Burroughs, you gave me a shock. What are you doing creeping about at this time of night? Watching you remove the alarm bell case, sir. Don't be melodramatic. I forgot my key and didn't want to set the alarm off. Oh, I see. And is this yours, sir? Yes, portable film screen. Just bought it. Play your cards right and I'll let you watch my home movies. Do you know, I've never seen one of these before, sir. Look, don't touch it. They're very delicate and very expensive. So sorry, sir. Will there be anything else? No. But... Very interesting that you weren't watching it at all. No, well, it actually established what I thought. It does? Yes. I'm very glad to hear it. Any questions you'd like to ask? It had ask nothing about? to do with it at all. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, I would like to ask uh, P.C. Hope, who doesn't seem to have risen very far in his profession. Um, he said that that painting is nearer than you may think. Now, uh, Constable Hope, uh, would you describe yourself as a literal-minded man or a rather fanciful, jokey, humorous sort of man? Which Definitely, of, sir. Of the two, Constable. Oh, I see, sir. I, I, if you don't mind my saying so, sir, like you said I haven't risen far in my profession, sir. Mm. It's because I've based my whole career, sir, on Sexton Blake. Sex what? Sexton oh, Blake, sex, sir. Se oh, yes. yes. And the unfortunately my sergeant thinks I'm old-fashioned, sir. I can see that. Mm. But, sir, if you knew the clue that I saw, sir, you would realise that the painting was nearer to us than any of us would imagine, sir. Back to square. One. One, two, three, four. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, we're ready for the next replay. This is Jackie Collins' replay. She'd like to see where Pierre Legrand puts the painting in the briefcase. Wouldn't allow that. You're honestly... Excuse me, uh, Constable. Hmm. I have arranged for the great expert on art forgeries, Royce Turner, to examine the René. <sighs> I am certain that it is a fake, but you know, with so much at stake, I would be grateful for a second opinion. Oh, that's a good <laughs> idea, sir. One leave a year. Yes, Jackie? Yes, that's fine. Great help to you? Great help. Any questions you'd like to ask? Yes, I'd like to ask Paul something. When did your father die? Four years ago. He died four years ago? Mm -hmm. Four years and how many months? Oh, when was it? March? Yes, I think it was March, yes. It was March 19... <laughs> Mar March, no, it was the middle of March. It was a very wet day. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they don't add very well, is <laughs> it? <laughs> so, you couldn't tell me exactly. I mean, it was just it was four, four, years four years ago. Well, March, four years ago. It was March 1969, 1970. And what are we in now? We've obliterated. <laughs> We're 1974. But, but you only moved into the house four years ago. I mean, you, as he died, you moved in. Well, I mean, the move was such an upheaval for him, and he had a heart attack on the doorstep. Ah, I mean, he married, and it was really the marriage that upset yes. him. Yes. Right, so. hmm. He wasn't well, a young man. No, obviously. <laughs> All right now? Yes, yes, yes. Good. Ready for the next replay, which is Pete Murray's. He'd like to see where Royce Turner is seen uh, returning with the painting. Sorry, Lady Spencer. Our friend Pierre here was right. Rene is a fake. Oh. Then we do have a crime on our hands. And it's very difficult to tell, ain't it? But if this is a fake, where is the genuine Rene? Well, by now it's probably been offered to a private collector for a sum or far below its real value. Oh, it could be a thousand miles away by now. I don't. <clears throat> How did that grab you? Yeah, it grabbed me, yes, I must say. Uh, did it help you? Well, I'd like to uh, direct a question to, uh, I think, uh, Constable Hope, if I may. Yes, of course. <coughs> the Columbo of Ramsbury. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Constable Thank you Hope, uh, <laughs> would you describe yourself as, as an art expert yourself? Do you appreciate painting? Um, well, sir, I put it to you this way, sir. I, I know what I like, sir, and I like the top half of that painting. <laughs> I understand what you mean. Uh,
could you tell me, when uh, Mr. Royce Turner returned with the painting, you looked at it, and you did a double take when you looked at it, and you turned it around. What, what, what were you doing there, exactly? Well, i tell you what, sir. It was what I believe is called an alliteration, sir. If you don't understand that, you I'll ask, ask Mr. I'll ask Arthur. That's, that's yeah. right. What's an alliteration, Arthur? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Bob, but it died. Did it? <laughs> Sung it under the tap. <laughs> when I said, sir, we have a crime on our hands, sir. Yes. I thought for a moment it was my answer. Why, why did you think that? Well, because I caught sight of them suddenly, sir. You know, and there they were, as it were, with blood on them. I you see. Know. Thank, Thank you very much indeed, yes. Thank you very much, yes, Peter Murray. Thank you very much. Comfortable. Well, I hope I'm afraid time is up, ladies and gentlemen. Completely. No more questions. Now, I would like you, panel, to write down who done it Good and as many clues as you can. Right, <coughs> this applies to our audience panel as well, because one of you could win our trophy. Now, after the break, all will be revealed, which reminds me, for those of you who've never heard of the great René, uh, he was famous for painting ladies in the nude. Of course, he insisted on wearing his socks, otherwise he had nothing to wipe his brushes on. <laughs> See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> copies of all the cards from the experts so they can't change their minds but first we have a winner from our audience panel and the winner is uh, Mr. W.D. Cole of Southfields in London congratulations Mr. Cole uh, you of course will win our Who Done It trophy now panel I want you to give us your solution as to who done it and give us a clue uh, Kingsley Amis, who done it? Well, the guilty pair, obviously the so-called uh, Monsieur Le Grand and the so-called uh, Royce Turner, an expert on art forgeries. Mm -hmm. uh, several clues here. Um, I was impressed by the, in questioning their joint attempt to demonstrate they knew nothing about art, really. So that was a clue in a sort of um, reverse direction. There was the fact that Le Grand had a so-called expert Turner instantly available in the wilds of Loamshire. Um, only art experts could arrange the disposal of a valuable picture quickly and efficiently. Um, they had all the opportunities to pretend that a, a substitution had taken place. And of course, on the negative side, there was the obvious innocence of Lady Spencer and Paul and the clear integrity of Burroughs, by which I was very impressed. Very well observed, Mr. Amos. Thank you. Jackie Collins, who done it? Well, I would say, I mean, I would, I would say Pierre Le Grand may be in collusion with Lady Margaret, but I'm not quite sure on that. But I would say he had the opportunity because he took photos of the painting a month before. So he had the photos that he could have had copied for a forgery. And um, I think what happened was that the painting um, was the real painting. Mm. When he we pulled it away from the wall and said it was a forgery, it was actually the real painting. Now, he put it into his briefcase, and the legs of the painting went first. But when he put it in his car under the rug, he obviously switched it with another briefcase because when they took the painting out of the briefcase in the house, um, the legs came out last. That I mean, no, no, I mean the legs came out first again and yes. they'd gone in first. So yes. it was obviously a switch. We understand perfectly what you And mean. I think that he did it for money, obviously, as one does most things in life. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur Mullard, who done it? Well, I think the same as uh, my learned friend and counsel. The red coat. Uh, Royce Turner and Pierre Legrand. They were the only two geezers that knew nothing about anything at all about art. And Pierre Legrand was the man who said it was a fake for a start. He, he took it round to his old china plate round the corner there, and, it, <laughs> and he confirmed it. So therefore, the pair of made it sewn up between them. All he had to go do was go in the other room, bring out a ring, and that was it. Thank you very much, Arthur Mallard. Pete Murray, who done it? Well, there's so many red herrings in this, I feel like I'm in a fishmonger's. But uh, <laughs> I put down Pierre Legrand in collusion with Royce Turner. I, uh, d I don't believe that the painting was ever really stolen. I believe that um, Pierre Legrand already had a copy of the René in his briefcase. I believe he put the, re the uh, real one into the briefcase and uh, he switched the, the uh, briefcases in the car. So I think Pierre Legrand in collusion with Royce Turner. Thank you very much, Pete Murray. 
Right, now, let's see who was right, shall we? Will the real who done it stand up, please? Aye. Uh, excuse me. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> but by a complex deduction based on Saxy Blake, I'll show you how I deduced. It goes like this. Eeny, meeny, meeny, Pierre Le Grand, uh -huh. you're under arrest. Uh, before I go, um, I do have uh, one or two paintings I would like to dispose of very quickly. Uh, <laughs> uh, Arthur, could you help me out, please? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a nice chipley down the tongue. <laughs> well, Jackie Collins, you were right. And therefore you win £50 to go to a charity of your own choice. Many congratulations. Uh, you also win our Who Done It trophy. And a, pier, a pair of Pierre René socks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, now to stop any further arguments, uh, let's just show you how it was done. It was simply a matter of keen observation, and you don't have to know anything about art at all. Watch. When Legrand pointed out that the picture was a fake, it was in fact absolutely genuine. He then insisted on getting a second expert opinion, and when he packed the picture, you should have noticed that he put the painting into the case, knees first. He then placed the genuine picture in the boot of his car. He had a fake copy in a similar case ready in the boot of his car. And on arrival at Royce Turner's house, he took the case out with the fake in. But what gave him away was that when he removed the picture from the case, it was upside down, i.e. knees first. Therefore, he must have switched cases. <laughs> well, of course, now you know why Legrand wanted to use his own car. Well, Lady Spencer had no motive to be involved because she could have sold the painting to the open market for far more money. Did you get it right? Well, whether you did or not, let's see if you can work out why the gorilla attacked the white rabbit? Or was it a bear disguised as a gorilla? Now, this is the intriguing plot for next week's Who Done It. So, until then, it's thank you, panel. <laughs> thank you, Carl. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who wondered what's happened to the painting, for security reasons, it's been put in the smallest room in the house uh, so that art lovers can contemplate it during their reflective periods. <laughs> Good night. See you next week.